Hi, and welcome to another episode of 3 Minute Histology with Jamie Chapman. Today we're going to be looking at the colon or the large intestine. So let's start our three minutes. Okay, so first of all we can see several features here. Now the first thing I want to point out is that this slide is not from a human. So how can we tell that it's not a section from the human? Well, the way we can tell is that we have a complete outer longitudinal layer of the tunica muscularis. You can see it's complete here. Now, in humans, the outer longitudinal layer of the muscularis is arranged into three bands called tinea coli. So they'd be sort of large extensions um, associated with the outside layer of the muscle. We don't see that. So this is from a non-human uh, mammal. The other things that we can note from this magnification are these folds. These are non-permanent folds, a little bit like rugae. So they're folds of both the mucosa and the submucosa. And they're non-permanent, so they can expand to accommodate the feces as it makes its way through the large intestine. If we have a look at a bit more detail of the um, mucosa, we can see that um, the mucosa of the large intestine is composed of these um, simple columnar epithelium, just like the most of the rest of the gastrointestinal tract, and that um, th we have simple straight tubular glands. So while the rest of the gastrointestinal system is uh, characterized by having uh, glands which are slightly coiled, one characteristic feature of the large intestine or the colon is that they have these simple straight tubular glands. So if generally, if you can see a gland with its opening and the lumen all the way from the top to the bottom, there's an excellent chance that you're actually looking at a section of the large intestine um, because it's very difficult to get that sort of picture in, uh, in a slide. And so we've got several instances where you can see the lumen all the way down to the base there. If we zoom in, we can see that we're, um, the epithelium is made up of two major cell types, largely uh, goblet, goblet cells, which are secreting a mucus, which is helping to lubricate the movement of the increasingly dry uh, feces as it makes its way through the gastrointestinal tract. And we've got our enterocytes, which are responsible for absorbing water. And so that then um, increases or removes the water from the um, developing feces and therefore we need more lubrication, which is why we have so many goblet cells. So as I said, we have these simple straight tubular glands. Um, again, we find mitotic features down the base of these intestinal glands. We've got lamina propria uh, in between. When we zoom out a little bit, we can still see our muscularis mucosa here, a smooth muscle. Here's our submucosa, and then out here we have our two layers of our tunica muscularis, so an inner circular layer, and as I mentioned before, an outer longitudinal layer, which in humans would be three bands of the tinea coli. So in general terms, we can see just a few other features. These include things like these big, large lymphoid follicles, and sometimes you can see them disrupting into the mucosa there. But those are the major features of the large intestine. Thanks for listening.